Hello again and welcome back to another episode of Manic Movie Reviews. Today we are going to be reviewing 2017's Mouse, which is currently streaming on Netflix. The movie is about a young couple, uh, one of them being a Bosnian woman who went through the Bosnian-Serbian war back in the 90s, and her German boyfriend, as they're going through Bosnia, we're not really sure why they're going through Bosnia, all we know is that's where they're at and they're in the forest. They basically broke down on a trail that doesn't look like any car should go down it. Now, maybe it's different out there. Maybe cars can go down these skinny trails, but it just looked weird to me. And as they're going through the forest, she's got this amulet, which is supposed to protect her. And this creature is supposed to be terrorizing them through this forest. It's not. You don't, you barely see the creature at all. Really, it's about the two men that they run into that end up being the real villains of this movie. There's one scene where it's not really graphic, it's not hardcore, but it is intense because it is a rape scene. But I will say, few things in horror make me more uncomfortable than rape scenes. There is just something about rape scenes that I hate, hate watching them. And I don't mean there's something about them. Obviously, it's uncomfortable even in a, a make-believe fantasy setting to see someone get raped. But it just makes me uncomfortable on such like a deep level. And I know that's really kind of the point of horror. And if you look at a lot of movies, if, uh, like directors that have done movies that have rape scenes, a big thing they'll say is that's part of the horror genre is to make you uncomfortable. It's not just ghosts and goblins and blood and gore, but that doesn't make me enjoy it anymore. But the rape scene is kind of the first of many scenes where we're not sure what's real and what's in her head. There's another scene in the mine where uh, it's clearly her flashing back to the war when her father was murdered but it's happening in the same mine. And so it's, with it being in that setting, but being something that isn't clearly happening, and the way it goes into that scene, in the mine, I mean, or shelter, whatever it really is. Either way, we have many, many scenes where it's really hard to tell, is this really happening or not? Which, again, like so many aspects of this movie, can be cool when used in moderation if it's like one or two but when the whole thing is spent going is this happening is it not happening what's really going on it actually becomes more of a laborious effort when it's a laborious effort it again takes away from the immersion of the film Overall, it starts out with a very artsy feel. It's got a very artistic look to it as far as the way the bokeh is used. Uh, long, drawn-out single shots as far as following one character for long periods of time. But it follows each character from the back of their heads. Like, I mean a lot. Like, a, a large portion of this movie is the back of people's heads. And at first, it does make for this kind of interesting vibe, but by the middle of this movie, you're so tired of seeing the backs of people's heads. And they do a lot of different camera work that in moderation could be really cool. Like as far as like the backs of people's heads and not really allowing the viewer to see what was around. That could be really cool when used in moderation, but I would be willing to bet like 10 to 20% of this movie is following the back of someone's head. And it does transition into these cool shots of like the front of them and it uses it in an interesting way. But after like the umpteenth time of this being used, it's just not interesting anymore. It really, really takes the immersion away when you're sitting there and you're conscious of I'm looking at the back of this person's head again. And speaking of things being left to obscurity, we get several scenes or at least several parts of scenes that happen in just total blackness. Like the screen is black and all you've got is audio, which again, yet again, this is going to be a theme throughout this review, a really cool trick and a really cool tactic that if used in moderation can add to the uneasiness, but it just, it just happens so often. The boyfriend in this movie is frustratingly dim-witted. 
frustratingly naive. They're in a setting where it's unfamiliar and things aren't comfortable and things are clearly wrong and so many times this dude just bolts off in the other direction sometimes immediately following telling her i'm here for you i'm your guardian angel i'm gonna take care of you and then he just disappears it just is idiotic on a certain point not on the writing sense i mean as a character it's idiotic you're in the middle of a force that you're not familiar with the one person you have here that is familiar with it the girl you claim to love is making it very clear that we shouldn't be here and that we shouldn't be just trexing around the place and that's exactly what he ends up doing this guy is so easy to hate like 30 minutes into this movie, I was waiting for him to die. I also just felt like they couldn't decide if they wanted this to be a survival horror or if they wanted this to be a creature feature. And it's not even really so much how the movie plays out. The movie plays out like a straight up survival horror. That's how the whole thing plays out. There is a small aspect of the creature mouse in this but if you go online, so much of it talks about this couple goes into the woods with an amulet and this creature is terrorizing them in the forest. Now, there, are, there, there could be a lot of suggestions. Maybe a lot of the things that are happening are because of the creature. We do eventually find out this creature, Mouse, is actually protecting her. And so it's this very misleading, almost like marketing campaign. Kind of like if you've seen Behind Her Eyes, where uh, the whole thing was WTF, this ending. It was basically them pushing that whole idea to sell the show on people. They're putting it forward and out to people in one way, and then you go and watch it, and it's not that at all. All. I will say it really really makes a comment on the still existing tensions between the Bosnians and the Serbians as a result of the Bosnian and Serbian war and it does do a good job of really kind of driving that home I will give it that but so much just takes you out of the immersion the ending we get one of the longest most boring drawn out follow shots of again the back of someone's f***ing head i'm telling you so much of this movie is the backs of people's heads it doesn't make sense i don't know what the thought process was there i get why everything's dro drowned out in boca because you're supposed to focus just on them and that is usually why boca is used I mean, Boca is an artifact of the camera. However, it's used in a way usually to blur out either the things that aren't important or it's used sparingly to create tension and fear in a horror movie. But this is so much of that. And this last scene of, the, of this girl walking through this park is just so drawn out. It's like, dude, just roll the credits. I don't even give a shit where she's headed. I don't give a shit what's going on. Just roll the credits the rest of them were why are we doing this again this last one is oh my god dude this is too much overall this is a mediocre movie that had a lot of potential it had a lot of potential you've got underlying tension with the characters you've got the interesting premise of the mouse or of mouse which could be Again, really cool if it wasn't like, oh, it's terrorizing them in the woods, and then no, it's absolutely not. It's actually hardly in the f***ing movie. If you can get around the backs of heads, which cuts out about, it's genuinely got to be 10 to 20% of this movie. But if you can get around that, and you can get past all of the little frustrations that I have with some of the cinematography choices. It's actually not a terrible movie. And I think a big part of what works well for this movie comes from the characters because you do have a clear tension between this Bosnian girl and her German boyfriend and these two Serbian men out in the woods. And it really does show this tension and bitterness and hatred between them as a result of the Bosnian-Serbian war. And I really feel like that 
in addition to the idea of mouse and all of that story wise it's actually very good the problem is a lot of the cinematography choices and i don't know if i've ever done a movie review like this before where the story is actually very good and the cinematography is actually taking away from the story and it was this very weird kind of conflicted uh, feeling because it actually doesn't seem to happen very often because you've got good cinematography elements being way overused on top of a story that's actually pretty solid. Overall, I would say if you've got the time and you're browsing through Netflix and you can't figure out what you want to watch, go check out Mouse. It's actually not that bad. Be prepared to hate the boyfriend. You're going to hate the boyfriend. I hated him uh, very, very quickly. So with that said, if you did like the video today, go ahead and throw me a thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and throw a thumbs down. My feelings won't be hurt. You can leave some comments down below. I would love to know what you guys thought of this movie. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you like me where you kind of liked it, but there was a lot of it that was just frustrating, kind of pissed you off a little bit. Maybe you don't care as much as I do to get that worked up where you're pissed off about it, but who really knows? But like I said, guys, Thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave some comments down below. If you do have any movie suggestions, I would love to get some movie suggestions from you guys. Otherwise, hit the subscription button if you want to stay up to date on more content. And I will see you guys next time.